If you're adding a new raised bed to your garden, you may be considering both a wood or a metal raised bed. Which is gonna be the best choice for you? Out of my 19 raised beds, I have both. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the differences between the two so that you can make a better informed decision for your garden. Some of these differences may seem obvious, but some may surprise you. And one of them was something I noticed just this year regarding a particularly annoying insect. Before we talk about the distinctions between the two, I wanted to make sure you know that when it comes to the comparisons that I'm doing today, I use treated lumber in my raised beds. This video right here will explain to you why I do that. But a lot of the comparisons are going to be similar even if you don't choose to use treated lumber in your raised beds. Also, the metal raised beds that I'm using are the Birdies raised beds. I chose those for a couple of reasons. Number one, I had seen how Kevin over at Epic Gardening had been using them in his garden in Southern California. I was worried about metal being too hot for my climate and I'll be sharing with you kind of how that was really not a concern but keep that in mind when I'm talking about the metal raised beds because not all metal raised beds are created equal. All right let's get to the differences between wood and metal raised beds. The first big difference between the two is the ability to customize the size of your bed if you use a wooden bed. As you can see here, we created a U-shaped bed that I designed myself and my husband built for me. You can do whatever shape and size you want, you can do whatever height you want, and you can really do whatever fits your garden space. So this makes the options on size almost endless. But the metal birdies raised beds are actually more customizable than you might think. This one here is an eight in one raised bed and the eight in one means that it can be configured eight different ways. You can see here this one is long to fit my space, but the ones in my garden are also the eight in one, but I chose for them to be a little bit different of a configuration. You can also choose different heights. This one is 15 inch, but you could also get a tall version if you don't want to have to bend that low and you want a taller raised bed. So even though building your own wooden raised beds offers you the opportunity to customize and build whatever size you want, the Birdies Race beds are actually quite customizable themselves. Next, let's talk about assembly because this is a big difference between a wood raised bed and a metal raised bed. When you're building your own wooden raised bed, you're going to have to be able to haul the lumber back home wherever you buy it from. You're gonna to have to have tools to be able to assemble the lumber. You have to be able to cut the boards and then put them together. It just requires quite a bit to be able to build a raised bed. And if you're not the type of person who likes to do the DIY or you don't have the tools available, then then this may not be as easy of an option for you as it is for others. By comparison, these metal birdies raised beds were a cinch to be able to assemble. The box came directly to my door so I didn't have to go shopping for lumber. And then the instructions were very easy to understand and it was put together very, very quickly. So the ease of assembly is definitely an advantage for the birdies metal raised beds. The next difference is in movability. Often we don't assemble our raised beds in place where they're going to go into our gardens. And so we have to transport those beds into the place that they are going to finally be. Wood raised beds, depending on their size, can be quite heavy to lift. Obviously this four by 20 required two people, but often even the four by eights will need two people as well so that we don't hurt our backs. That's definitely something to consider if you don't have anyone to help you out being able to get the wooden raised beds in place. In comparison, the metal birdies raised beds were a cinch for me to move just as one person. They are super lightweight. I was able to get all of my beds in place just by myself without any problems. Another difference we have is durability. Even treated lumber beds can last for many years. Mine are about 10 years old and counting, but over time they do start to age. And depending on what kind of lumber you get, sometimes the treated lumber does come out a little bit warped and you don't realize it until you get it into your bed. So you've got some of those things that have to do with the durability and quality in general that you're not going to have to worry about with a metal raised bed like a birdies raised bed. Another thing about the birdies raised bed is that a lot of people are justifiably concerned about growing in metal raised beds if they live in a hot part of the country. If your climate is hot, you worry about the metal raised beds getting too hot, whether that be hot to the touch or too hot for your crops. And I will have to say last year when we got into 100 degree temperature 
temperatures for six weeks or so. I never had a problem with it being too hot to the touch. And I actually did a little bit of a test to see how the soil temperature was compared to other raised beds and in my ground bed. I talk about that in this video here. But suffice it to say, the birdies raised beds are perfectly fine in the summer heat. Now, is that the case with other metal raised beds? I don't know because I've never tried them, but I have heard people tell me that if they grow in those galvanized steel beds, like the horse troughs you get at Tractor Supply, that those can heat up quite a bit and could potentially burn out your crops in the heat of the summer. Again, I don't have experience with that. If you do, let us know in the comments below, but I can tell you that heat is not a problem with the birdies raised beds. The next difference is one thing that I've noticed just this year, and I don't know if it's just an anomaly or if this is something that I should look out for in the future. But I've noticed that when it comes to fire ants, I seem to see more fire ants in my wooden raised beds than I do in my metal raised beds. Now don't get me wrong, the metal raised beds will still have them on occasion, but I've noticed in my wooden raised beds that the fire ants tend to congregate in the junctures between the wood. Maybe if the wood is pulling apart a little bit or if there's a little crevice, they like to get in there. And so I tend to see those more in wooden raised beds than the metal raised beds. Again, this is just an observation I've made this year. I'll definitely keep watching for it, but it makes sense that the crevices between the wood would be a little bit more appealing for a fire ant compared to the thin walls of the metal raised bed. The biggest difference that I see between wooden raised beds and metal raised beds is a difference you've probably already thought about, and that is the cost. Now that the prices of lumber have started to calm down a little bit since the pandemic, treated lumber in particular is quite a bit more affordable. In fact, this four by 20 raised bed that we built this year, I checked the receipt and the wood for that was only about $60, maybe a little bit less. I think we had some of the four by four posts left over from another project, but most of this wood and the screws that we had to buy was less than $60. So definitely if you're on a budget and you're willing to do the work, building your own wooden raised bed is going to be the most economical in the short term. I say in the short term because even with treated lumber, over time you do get the lumber that starts to buckle and pull apart, as you can see with this one. These beds are actually about 10 years old, so they have given me quite a few years. But from what I've seen, the birdies raised beds can last even longer. And of course, we're talking about treated lumber, but if you're choosing to purchase something like cedar or other rot resistant lumber, then the price is not gonna be near that inexpensive. So yes, the difference in cost is going to be the biggest difference between wood and a high quality metal raised bed like birdies. But if you're watching this video in real time, Epic Gardening is having a birdies raised bed sale. It's a buy three, get one free birdies raised bed sale. And you can use my promo code journey with Jill to get an additional 5% off of your order. That promo code during this period applies not only to the birdies raised bed, but everything else on Epic Gardening site. All of this only good through May 29th. If you're on a budget and you want to consider a high quality metal raised bed like birdies, you may not want to get three all at one time. You can still use that code for 5% off, but if you're wanting to outfit your garden with more than one birdies raised bed, this would be a great time to get that discount. The buy three, get one free goes through May 29th and we'll have all of the details in the description. Truly gardening and raised beds is my favorite way to garden and I hope if you're considering a new raised bed this video has been helpful for you to know the difference between the two. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure if you like this video to like this video and subscribe for more gardening videos in the future.